Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Yeah. Thank you so much for for joining our our first session uh, for property managers. Um, the Vacation Rental Safe Harbor team is very excited to have you on board and to share with other property managers uh, who are in the same situation as you are and want to know firsthand uh, the struggles that you have been facing and also what measures you have taken to to counteract uh, this uh, this whole crisis uh, caused by the coronavirus and uh, the pandemic that we're all living right now. Uh, so I have here with me today uh, Lucien Julien from Riviera Holiday Homes in Nice in France. Hello, Lucien. Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, Andy Osborne from Resort Choice based in Murcia in Spain. Hello, Andy. Hi, Alexia. <laughs> and also uh, from the Safe Harbor team, uh, Jose Vasquez based in Miami right now. <laughs> okay, so I would like to hear a bit, uh, what is your input on this, uh, on this uh, situation and what was the impact that you, you have seen on your businesses? Obviously, the tourism industry was the first one to get uh, the first hit of the, of the crisis and the, the quarantine and the, the ban on, on traveling. So uh, share a bit of insights with us on, on how did that affect you. Andy, would you like to go first? Um, yeah, I can go first. Okay, um, difficult subject to talk about, but uh, let's get on with it. Um, I, I think we're in the same boat as everybody else in the same industry. Um, it's been a very, very difficult time. And, um, you know, it sort of went in sort of stages. First stage we had was what's going to happen, maybe happening. And then we need to look at the guests. Do we need to move them out? Do we need to get them home? Uh, are they going to stay, um, which we still have some staying now and still there. Um, mm -hmm. and, and then obviously we're on to the, the next stage. Uh, what, what do we do from here? Um, so, you know, every country has been affected, I think, more or less the same, but we have different impacts depending on what seasons we're in. You know, the ski season has a different season to the... To of course. The, mm -hmm. And the urban market has a different to what we have now. Um, so, um, you know, in the short term, we just need to live with it, um, do as much as we can in the business. And, uh, and I personally feel at this stage, it's for all property managers, I think we need to look at our expenses. We need to clear out as many expenses as we possibly can. Um, all only for the short term, because we, hopefully we're not far away from moving, moving on. I could be eating my words in a couple of months' time, but uh, my feeling is we've got two or three months of this, and then uh, we need to look at the season. And for us, we've got the summer season three or four months away, so if we're very lucky, we will still get that season. Okay. Thank you, Andy. What's your, what's your input, Lucien? Um, a lot of cancellation for March, of course, till mid-April and also May, because in on the French Riviera, we have uh, huge heavens, which are uh, Grand Prix de Monaco, Monaco Grand Prix yeah. uh, in Monaco. We have um, the Cannes Film Festival, which normally will be postponed uh, end of June, beginning of July, but it's not sure. Uh, we have uh, Iron Man, uh, beginning of uh, June in Nice. Uh, we try also to postpone the, the guests. Um, and a lot of huge heaven has been cancelled. Then um, uh, now, we, uh, because of the platform, uh, we, we cancel without, uh, with, without uh, letting us the possibility to postpone client till end of March. They, did, they, they canceled the booking and they don't give us any uh, possibility to postpone the client till mid-April. From mid-April till um, end of May, uh, we postpone the client without any problem for next year or uh, for um, uh, later in the season, September, October. Mm -hmm. Okay, then, so yeah. clear. Please, please. Yeah. Hello. Okay, so uh, as, as Andy mentioned, uh, very short term. Lucien, can you still hear us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. 
So as Andy mentioned, uh, very short term, uh, we need to accept that there will be some losses and try to find uh, ways to, to fight, fight this and, uh, and not to lose hope. And I think that many businesses and many, many property managers um, have gone a bit in, in paralysis uh, with all this uh, that hit us all, all of a sudden. It was a very short margin of reaction, and it yeah. went from zero to uh, panic mode uh, worldwide. And so many people don't know what to do, really. And that's why I, I wanted to, to have you today, um, just to discuss a bit uh, your perspective, and not just you know from an expert or a consultant, but from mm -hmm. firsthand a property manager who is uh, living the same situation. So um, you mentioned about postponing. Uh, obviously, you depend a lot of uh, on events in in Nice. There's a lot of big events that that mm -hmm. drive uh, tourism. Um, how are you managing the, the postponing the clients or rescheduling their, their bookings? Mm, we have trying to postpone, uh, as I told you, uh, later in the season or for next year. Uh, most of the clients who book for um, Monaco Grand Prix and the uh, Cannes Film Festival, we managed to postpone them uh, in 2021. Mm -hmm. And the one... Uh, which were able to come um, uh, independently from those events. We postpone. We will postpone them in October, in September and October. Okay. And we, for the same, uh, for the same value for money in the same property. Actually, it works uh, pretty fine. Mm -hmm. Then uh, we will keep the down payment uh, into our account for those um, for those guests. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but, but, but that's uh, what we are doing actually. But the thing is, how can we fight uh, with uh, against the, the platform? So you you were mentioning earlier uh, a law that just came out in France. Can you tell us a bit about that, please? Then uh, the uh, the government. Um, uh, uh, yeah, as I told you two two days ago, we have a new law which allowed us to keep uh, to postpone the every of our clients for a maximum uh, of uh, eighteen months. Mm -hmm. In the next following maximum eighteen months, that means the the guests who booked um, and maybe we will have a possibility, but we will have to fight against the platform with the portal uh, to to um, also um, to take in charge the bookings from beginning of March. But we will have to fight with that. Okay. But that That's means about... that maybe if uh, the platform, they will have to um, give us back the down payment of a cancellation till uh, for March and mid till mid April. Okay, what but would you I'm say? They sure will be able to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, as uh, this being a, a law on a national level, uh, there will be some fighting on on the matter. Um, mm. But what would you say is the percentage of of bookings that you have lost? Um, due to cancellation determined only on one side, where you had no word in it. You mean for the um, for March? Yeah. Oh, we um, we we cancel all the bookings. Yeah, that means uh, yeah, it's more than uh, more than uh, yeah, more than ninety percent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and till, your... uh, yeah, that's the same till mid-April, yeah. Yeah, mid-April, okay. Mm. And, and what's in, your input course, on this? Well, of course, it includes, in France, we have, of course, the Easter holidays, then it includes also Easter holidays, yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess that uh, for all the affected countries right now, the Easter peak that would be reservations and holidays mm. is completely gone. Andy, you were mentioning this earlier. Want to bring in some comments? Yeah, sure. I mean, it, it's it's a similar scenario, really. I mean, we are trying and trying to get people to move. Um, but we must also understand these people could be in a bad position themselves. Um, so, yes, we have had maybe what we started to do was basically just say to the guests, look, if you move to later in the year or even within a year's time, 
uh, we will give you an extra 10% off of what you've already paid towards yeah. the we, did, we tried this and, and it has worked for some people. Um, yeah. maybe, maybe not everyone, but maybe 30% we have saved. But to me, 1% is better than no percent. So uh, um, of course. I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, the, the only worry I have is that if things do not improve rapidly, those people may get in difficult and end up having to cancel anyway. But for now, we've saved the bookings. And, um, and, you know, hopefully they will come later in the year. So, but we have to see. I mean, it, it's, it's the best we can do at this moment in time. Um, so that's what we've done, and, and it has worked a bit. I, I did see another couple of posts which I thought were quite good. There was somebody that said if they rebook in the future, they're offering free transfers from the airport. That's another good idea. For us, it doesn't work, but... It's a good mm. idea for other people to do that sort of thing as well. So, yeah, there, there's some people doing some good um, ideas out there to try and keep their customers. Uh, and, you know, for us, we're all in the same boat and it's all exactly new. It's all new to all of us. We've not been in this position ever before. Um, some people have had other certain things. You know, I remember when we had the, um, the what was it called, the clouds, the problem with the... Uh, the uh, ash clouds and that, but it was nothing like this. Um, hmm. so we've had a little bit of it before where we've had to cancel bookings and move people, but this is all new to all of us. Of course, of course. And especially because of that, I guess it's important now for property managers to get creative, as you said, uh, bring in something extra, find different means to save that booking instead of canceling because it's obviously much more difficult to get the client back once they have cancelled, but if you maintain, uh, manage to retain them by giving an extra discount off or a special service or something that can keep them, you know, um, and, and convince them to, to stay with you at a later time, it's obviously uh, mm. something that is, is not lost. Uh, what other strategies do you think property managers should uh, implement in order to to improve a bit that uh, that stability in 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 losing bookings. Uh, for me, I had it into my um, into my website uh, what I call a new serenity policy for um, okay. cancellation. Then, uh, I, if you can have a look, uh, maybe uh, into our website. It's, uh, I have four different possibilities to book with confidence for any new booking. For, but it concerns, of course, new bookings. Yeah, You can ca cancel without charge up to 90 days after confirmation of a booking. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess in, being more flexible right now is really, yeah, really important. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I had it into my, uh, in my new um, uh, cancellation policy uh, into the website. And um, to po if, you, if you wish to postpone your trip, uh, if you have already booked your stay, you have until the 30th of April to postpone your travel date, free of charge, mm -hmm. by sending an email directly to, to, the, to us. Yeah. Uh, after, if you will, if you will, if you wish to cancel your trip, you can cancel it free of charge up to 30 days before your arrival. And if you wish to plan your next stay, hello. Yep, you're there. Yeah, 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 we're listening. We're and, uh, listening. If you wish to plan your next day after the French uh, ministerial decree, you will only pay 10% deposit instead of 25% to confirm the reservation. That's what kind of strategy with our um, cancellation policy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We, I think that's we, one of the key points right now, the, the cancellation policy. Makes people be more at ease when booking and not so scared of, of putting yeah, down the, right. the deposit. It's to give uh, more confidence to people for the next following two months, yeah. Definitely. I, I, I guess that's... I wish it will work, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess confidence is a key word right now um, mm. on all the sides, you know. There's a, a circle in, in, our, in our sector, confidence from the property owners to continue with you, to continue having their property managed by you, confidence from the tourists, to maintain the destination for their holidays where it initially was, if it's an area that was affected by the by the COVID virus. Although right now, I guess there's no place that's really safe <laughs> in a way. Yeah, yeah, but, uh, mm. 
Andy, would you like to comment on this? Yeah, um, you know, I think it's all a great idea to have these different um, ways of confidence for the, for the guest. I think for the short term, I'm talking short term, the next two to three weeks, uh, nothing's going to happen. I, I don't think people are looking to book and I, I don't think there's any of that's going to happen. We are going to be looking at uh, um, cancellation policies and see if we can do some stuff, but I'm not going to really start that until we start to get a bit of movement. I think in the next two or three weeks, I, I can't see bookings coming in. You may get one or two for sure, but it, it's people have just got too many other things on their mind at the moment, and they still don't know where airlines are going to be and what they're going to do. Um, so I think in the short term, it's preserve what you've got and try and save what you've got in, in yourselves and you know cut all your expenses out. But in the meantime, this is the time now you have a lot of time on your hands. Not time we want, but we have it. <laughs> yeah, true. Um, yeah. So uh, now is the time to be thinking about your strategy for the next two months after these next couple of weeks to see what's going to happen. And, and, you know, we're already starting to write some blogs ready. We're starting to do some um, adverts ready. Um, hmm. I'm not going to spend money on advertising any of this now. I'm going to wait until we sort of get the next wave of information um, to start using that um, information that we have. So, yeah, we've, been, we've got the new website coming up. Um, so we're making some changes to that. Uh, and I, I think the time is now to just get together what you can, look at your pricing, what you're going to go ahead with in the future, look at your cancellation policies, um, look at your properties. For example, in, in, in our software, we've gone through a lot of our listings and tidied them up, put some more information on, things that we've been meaning to do, which you have never got time to do. Um, basically just been upgrading a lot of our listings. Mm -hmm. um, so we are ready. So when, when it does come back, you know, hopefully we'll be in a good position. Yeah, that's right. Mm. The only question, actually, because in um, in this area we are um, uh, kind of um, fifteen different um, agents. We are um, uh, under a kind of association, and we try to, of course, to understand the market each other according to the um, rate uh, the the rate we will have to to deal uh, for this summer because. Actually, we are thinking about uh, the, the summer season in the, in July, mid uh, mid June, the beginning of July and August. And uh, the question is, uh, are we keeping the rate as we are as we are actually, or we will we will be prepared to discount a lot? But uh, we don't want to destroy, also, of course, the market. Then, actually, we are thinking about about it. Yeah. What will we do with uh, the rate for this season? Considering that, uh, I guess, this season, most of the people will stay in France. We will yeah. have maybe a French market more than a foreigner market this year. I don't know how it will work, but it's a kind of feeling uh, actually end of March. Yeah, hmm. Yeah, I want to, if I can come in on that, um, you know, that, that, it's a... Uh, I think this is what's going to happen. You know, the, the market is going to be, uh, the people, you know, are going to be domestic customers this year. I mean, even when the airlines get back, who knows what's going to happen with the airlines. And then even mm. when the airlines get back in two or three months, are people comfortable flying on an airplane with another 200, 150 people? Um, I, don't, I don't know what the answer to that. Maybe the youngsters will be, but maybe the middle-aged to older people will decide against an airplane. Um, it's a very difficult one to know what's going to happen, but 100% sure when the market comes back, it's going to be local market first. Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's, it's, for us, we're very lucky. Well, we're not lucky at the moment, but we're, we're lucky that as in we do have a lot of Spanish clients. So for us, we are hoping that we're going to be in a strong position when it does come back because I'm sure all these families have been stuck at home together, kids running around, um, they want to yeah we will back in the, they want to get away somewhere they yeah that's right they want to get away um, mm. the problem is how much money do they have to spend yeah it? that's right also the question yeah so uh, sorry go on hmm. sorry um i think that there will be when all this crisis is over 
we don't know when, hopefully soon. But uh, what I do know for sure is that uh, we're going to come out changed after this mm -hmm. in every way, mm -hmm. on a business level and on a personal level as well, because it has yeah. taken a big impact on everybody and in all the industries. Yes. So on the one hand, uh, there are people who are stuck at home. And as you're saying, as soon as we're going to be able to, to leave, we're going to be crazy to travel. But at yeah. the same time, it depends on how big the hit is going to be on a personal level, if you're still going to be able to. And especially considering the fact that, um, let's say, hopefully we'll stick to scenario, uh, to the optimistic scenario that by summer we'll be able to travel and things will get back to normal. Obviously, summer is high season when all the prices are, are much higher. All the mm. people that used to go on a city break or on the spring holiday when it's more accessible will no longer be able to do so. So mm. I think it's really interesting the fact that you have uh, put out there this, this idea, Lucien, with your, with your associates. Because mm. uh, there's a big question like, do you prefer or would I rather sell lower but still sell? or keep my prices high and maybe get lucky to have somebody come in. Yeah, of course. The only thing it's a, it's a kind of a destruction, <laughs> a, mo a, a momentary, what can I say? Uh, a kind of um, des destruction of a, of a rate uh, policy. If, uh, I don't know if, I, I don't know actually what we will do. Of course, it's uh, it's better to to rent than no renting. Of course, but uh, is it cool, is it okay to to destroy the market? Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, the market for this season will be of course de uh, destroyed. But um, uh, we don't. We I don't, don't know think it's destroying the market mm. because if you put lower prices and you can open up to international traveling and not just limit to the local ones, mm. then maybe that can be a plus. I'll say you want to put something? Can I jump? Yeah. But the things that my property, my property they correspond to a foreigner um, uh, to the budget. That means uh, it was not till today the, the, the local market. 80% of my guests are coming from abroad. Mm -hmm. yeah. And now uh, it's the reason why. But my reflection actually is to uh, to discount the rate because of this uh, potential local market we will have this year. Yeah. yeah. Can I jump on here because uh, two things were said that I think are very important. I've been in several uh, panels discussing with people who's managing data at this moment. Some people from data companies that uh, we had this morning a panel. We just. Uh, recently published in a website. And what they say that the, uh, uh, Andy has just said now that there is no bookings happening and it's correct in short term. But in long term, there is a lot of bookings. I really recommend you to watch this video that we have just posted on the website because it says and shows how in the last two months, especially in the last month, uh, long term bookings, they have come out. But obviously it's not a, um, it may be an exception, but it's an option. But it's interesting what Julian is saying about rates because there is a lot of discussions and I think that in every single area should be different. So everybody should be able to adapt to his own situation. But uh, something is for sure, the, the, this crisis has changed many things and things will not be the same. So I think the first uh, thing we need to do is to get adapted and start to flow with the market. No? Mm. So. Uh, I think we must assume that the majority of the people making tourism is going to be local. People are going to stay, and for several reasons. Uh, first reason is because we don't even know if national countries are going to open their space. First, we don't know. Secondly, we don't know if the pandemic will be controlled by a uh, number of infections or just because people will be immunized, so they will keep on having restrictions. So. I think everybody agrees that it's going to be a lot of local. So in cases mm -hmm. like uh, foreigners, where it's also an opportunity to call people from Paris, people from uh, uh, Marseille, and also people from probably uh, uh, Strasbourg, uh, all mountain areas to go to Nice at a reasonable price. So perhaps, uh, Lucien, uh, you may not obtain 100% of what your rates are, but 
If you go down on prices, I would say uh, 20, 25 percent, you may have more chances to attract people and yeah, want to go to the yeah. sea. So uh, I know, I know that at this time people is making a balance, no, about what should I do. Definitely not dropping pricing, which means not just throwing pricings. No, you need to keep a, a level of pricing, but we can also make offers. This is a proposal that I'm writing an article on now, right now. It's like making an offer with a long stay. So you, you, you close this offer only for a long stay purposes and then special price to make it attractive. And, mm. uh, and also easy cancellation. I think that you, you just said something is very important. The strategy must be based on flexibility in all mm. terms. And I think this is going to stay in the sector. It's going to be a part of the sector. Flexibility uh, will be a must if you want to have uh, more customers because now it will be a lot of the uh, offer and less demand. So uh, I think that uh, definitely it's going to be domestic. Uh, in the terms of rates, if you want to restart your business, you need to come down a little bit with the pricing. This is important that you speak to the owner and explain to the owners. A lot of property managers depend on contracts with owners. So there will be owners that they may decide not to have anybody at home rather than drop pricing but some others they will say okay do what you want so i, I am listening to mm. some property managers telling me that some owners they don't want to change at all the conditions but some others do so you can have a mixture policy in your own uh, companies mm. yeah it's what i had in mind to do of course uh, I I was prepared to send um, an email first to the, all my um, all my owners, and after I will, uh, uh, in order to feel how they will react, offering different options, and then uh, I will adapt uh, every property to with a rate and uh, condition. Yeah, it's what I plan to do. Yeah, of course, it's really important right now to to assess the property owners and to tell them. I think this is the best strategy. This would be my best bet. In the end, you're the ones that know better uh, what is going on and what can work and what cannot. Uh, obviously, the, mm -hmm. the property owner, uh, at the end of the day, wants to have some income in, uh, some money mm -hmm. coming in, um, but they need to understand that the situation has changed. There's a big game change mm -hmm. right now, and we need to adapt. Uh, if mm -hmm. not, it's uh, you know adapt or die. <laughs> Basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I've I've read a lot of articles also uh, speaking about, um, in a way, a cleanup of the market, like uh, properties that are being, um, what do you call it, profitable, will continue yeah. mm -hmm. to be so, uh, while properties that are not managed by professionals that don't have a good service that are you know like the typical sofa and you put a, a two shelves from IKEA and just improvise. Um, a, a rental uh, will not uh, will not survive this crisis. Mm. Uh, Andy, what do you think about that? Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Um, you know, what we must forget in all of this process is we have owners of properties. Um, those owners have got mortgages to pay. Um, you know, they, they want income. Um, I think everyone in every property management business has a similar type of property property owner. They have good property owners, they have some bad property owners. They have mm. some good property owners with good properties, they have some good property owners with bad properties. Um, if you've got any bad properties out there with bad owners, this may be the time to depart these uh, owners because if they're not flexible, not helpful, they don't want to spend money on the properties or, or do anything, they're the ones that are going to get nothing out of this. Nothing. Mm. Um, so sometimes I think it could be, as you said, a little bit of a clear up operation as well, clean up. And um, I, I, I myself may have a couple of properties that I feel are just not worth it because the owner's not committed. They don't want to listen to what we have to say. And that then um, we may have to depart term. I don't want to, but... Really, if we can't come to some agreement with them that they understand that we're here on the ground looking at every angle every day, looking at every market, then we're never going to succeed with them. Of course. Yeah. And uh, going back to what you were saying uh, a bit earlier, Andy, about the strategies that we need to, 
to implement right now. Um, as I was saying, I think there will be a lot of changes in, in the sector in general. Um, so I would like your input also on how do you see this uh, changing on a, on a level of the key players that we currently have in our sector? What shifts in trends do you foresee in the, in the coming future? Um, well, there, there's current trends I'd like to see and <laughs> trends that um, I really, really hope that the professional property managers out there are getting stronger. You yeah, know, that, that's what I would have to say also, yeah. So over the, over the last few years, we have grown as property managers and we're getting more professional, we're getting more... Um, associations and that and, and to be honest we need to come up with some better ways of getting direct booking um, mm -hmm. we can offer better prices we can offer better service we're the people we know the properties we 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 know the local area we can give people all of these things you know what to do where to go booking mm. can't do that airbnb can't do it and and i think going forward I, I would hope that we're going to get more integration between all of us, that we, we end up getting driving direct bookings uh, and we become more successful ourselves. Um, looking at the key players now, okay, so we're looking at key players like Airbnb and Booking.com, Home Away. Um, I think they're doing a good job at making sure they look good. Um, and I really don't think they're looking after the professional property manager. Um, I, 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 might, I, I use the term a couple of times. I, I honestly believe they've thrown us under the bus. Um, and, but, you know, we, we've proven with some customers that we've been able to move the customer to a later date or even next year for a discount or some offer. And we've had that overridden by Airbnb just saying, no, you can have your money back. Here you go. Um, yeah, yeah. But, totally disgraceful way of running the business, but yeah. I can understand from their point of view, they want to look good uh, and want to protect the way they work. Yeah. Um, but it's been a disgraceful way for us because we've had mm. two or three bookings. We've actually moved the customer. Mm. And they've been happy, and now we've had to give their money back. Mm. So I just think it's a wrong way of doing business with property managers. And uh, me and Jose have had a chat about this in the thing. And, and we as professional property managers will have to look at the way we work with these companies in the future. Mm. No, I, I agree. We have to be stronger and stronger together. That means, uh, uh, again, with our, our CTA association, local association, we are, as I told you, 15 uh, ad agent and for a total of something around 1500 properties and we reflect about um, to have our own portals maybe it it could be um, it, it could be um, a reflection uh, events you may have to build to build a, a local um, a local portal for um, local uh, property manager I don't know, because we will have a question of synchronization between all our properties. I don't know. It's a kind of reflection we have, actually. I think only time will tell uh, what strategies will, will be working. Right now, it's difficult to say. We can anticipate. We can see trends. I guess we all coincide in the fact that the, there will be a rise of the professional property managers that will come out uh, stronger from from all this um and i guess that's why we're here no to give support and tips and information that can help other property managers uh to learn more to become stronger and to maintain uh, their their professional yeah. level and their and their businesses right now yeah. i would like to thank both of you very very much for for coming and joining us today in this uh in this conversation, as you know, in uh, in Vacation Rental Safe Harbor, uh, we're doing this just to support property managers. It's not a, a commercial platform. It's only here to bring up value and tips and information to, mm. to property managers out there and professionals in the sector. And so I really, really appreciate you taking the time to share this valuable information with us. Mm. And hopefully we can do more sessions because there's plenty of more topics to discuss. We can be here all afternoon. Yeah. Um, 
So again, thank you very much, and uh, and we'll keep uh, keep you posted on the new updates. Thank you, Alexia. Thank you, Jose. And oh, I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name again. Andre. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for your time, also. And good afternoon from uh, the French Riviera. Thank you very much. Have a lovely okay. e evening, all of you. Keep safe. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Stay safe. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye.